My name is Espen Knutsen and I am a Senior Curator of Paleontology with the Queensland Museum Network. This used to be the bottom of an ancient inland sea. So about 100 million years ago, all of this was covered by about 50 metres of water. And we've come out to look for the fossils of the animals that lived in this inland sea. And some of those uh, included plesiosaurs, there were long-necked uh, varieties with short heads uh, and were feeding on fish and squid. And we had short-necked varieties that so were feeding on, on the other plesiosaurs. And we also had ichthyosaurs that are dolphin-like reptiles. So we come out to look for the fossils of these. That will teach us much more about the history of uh, this ancient inland sea. So what I'm sitting here with here in my lap is the head of a plesiosaur that we dug out just a couple of days ago. So this head was actually attached to the body, which is really important because most of the time what we find here when we're digging out fossils of these things is that they have either just part of the body preserved with no head or some very rare occasions we find a head, but unfortunately it doesn't have a body attached to it. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is I'm making a field sketch of uh, the location of the bones in the quarry. So this is important to uh, uh, remember where things were as we found them because that can tell us a story about what happened to this animal after it died and settled on the bottom and before it was buried with sediment. So the fact that this guy had a body and head in the same animal is really important for us to be able to understand how many species of these things were there around at the time. Now it's beautifully preserved as well. We've got the eye here, we've got a row of teeth all the way to the back, uh, at, at the back of the jaw. And unfortunately we're missing the very tip of the snout, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's going to tell us a lot about the uh, taxonomy or the species diversity. So how many species of these things were around at the time. And it also teaches us about the ecology of these things. The shape of the skull, the shape of the teeth, and all those sorts of things will tell us about what kind of food was this animal feeding on and how was it feeding. So a very important specimen, this one here. So when I, the station owner of, of this property texted me a picture of this skull that uh, she had found uh, just from digging a little bit into the surface, it was just incredible. So the fact that we had a, suddenly had a beautifully preserved three-dimensional skull with a body it means that we're going to do so much more than what we could previously scientifically. It's a beautiful specimen to show the public, but it's just really important for the understanding of everything that we're trying to do when it comes to uh, knowledge about these faunas. So this is a great, great moment.